But what I wanted to focus on a little bit is just the evolution of uh, molecular testing and next generation testing, if you will. Um, and, and Mark, let me let me let you go first. And you know, do you think all patients should be tested, or what's your policy on testing? You know, your patient population for uh, using some sort of broad molecular test that might pick up something like an intract fusion. Yeah, John, I, I think the greatest thing a medical oncologist can do for a lung cancer patient, obviously my practice has been restricted to lung cancer for almost 30 years now. I finished my fellowship 31 years ago. Hmm. The greatest thing an oncologist can do is to diagnose an oncogenic driver. We have a, a closet full, I call it the closet full of highly effective targeted therapies. Those closet doors are closed until you make a molecular diagnosis. Yeah. And uh, for those of us in lung cancer who have a growing list of these actionable oncogenic drivers, you know, a patient one week is sick, they take a pill for a week, and they are so much better. Uh, and you start to look at um, where we're having some longer-term survival outcomes. You know, the average or median survival of an ALK-positive patient nowadays is measured in six, seven, eight years. When I started in this business, uh, we were proud to have a median survival of eight months with uh, platinum doublets, right? Yeah. So, so I think um, molecular, comprehensive molecular testing is important. I, I espouse the concept of leave no man behind. Um, I do comprehensive testing. We have an internal panel, and I'm happy to use uh, external uh, vendors to make sure that the list that I have in lung cancer, which includes NTRAC, is is interrogated. I happen to actually believe in testing both tissue and plasma. Uh, I send uh, both tissue and plasma on all my uh, newly diagnosed patients at the time of diagnosis. We know that there are things you find in tissue that you don't find in blood. Tissue is a sometimes a very scarce commodity okay. in non-small cell lung cancer, so it's tough to test everybody based on tissue. We know that finding things in plasma, if you find them, you can believe them, you can act on them, and the outcomes and response rates seem to be the same for plasma-identified patients versus tissue. So, Jody, yeah, let me jump in, Mark. And so, uh, Jody, Dr. Patel, give me in your practice when, just to another lung cancer perspective, when are you doing this testing? I've been so impressed by the lung cancer culture to where you have the discipline to do molecular testing before you know, initiating just some carbotaxol or whatever it is this year. And, and so give me a sense of when in lung cancer, because I think we're going to see some differences with our GI gang. Dr. Patel? So it, for lung cancer, for all patients at diagnosis with metastatic disease, we recommend upfront testing. I should say all non-squamous patients. That's yeah. sort of category one. We have great data. I think questions become sort of, do we do this sequentially? Do we do tiered testing where we may do some um, RT-PCR and then move on to more comprehensive to get an answer. I would say for most of our patients where tissue, as Mark correctly points out, is so precious, it makes sense now to get comprehensive NGS at the get-go. It's, um, although even like with NTRAC, you can have good sensitivity and pretty good specificity with IHC, it's wasting tissue. So most of us, I think, feel that upfront NGS and, and RNA makes a, a great deal of sense. And let me follow up on um, that in terms of the liquid piece of that too. I mean, again, this is a cultural difference between the GI gang and the lung gang. Mark brought up this great idea, of, should we be doing parallel plasma on every, or blood circulating markers? Are you doing the same? Absolutely. And I guess with the caveat that the blood, test, the blood tests are getting better and better, the technology is improving, you know, maybe a few years ago, some of the fusions, which were so bulky, particularly NTRAC, is difficult technically to pick up. It's a very large fusion um, that, you know, is now, as the testing has improved, um, there's good concordance um, in patients with significant disease that if you, you know, that uh, there are very few false, um, the false, there are very few false positives false negatives can occur, again, based a little bit on bulk of disease. Well, let me, let me ask you something I'm always curious about. When you've only got like a small biopsy that's not enough for a molecular profile, you know, your, your liquid biopsy, don't you need the, the tissue base to be at least as a comparator for that initial test? And what do you do if you don't have it? 
So I think if it is a, if it's a positive, then mm. absolutely. Positives are positives, yeah. Positive. Negatives yeah. need a repeat button. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Mark? Yeah, John, I mean, the only, the only time uh, the, the, the plasma is useful is if you, um, if you find something. If you don't find anything, you can't trust it. And most of us would go back and get more tissue at that point. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, sure, uh, let's give it the other side. Oh, yeah, Luis, sorry, go ahead. I want to add also, uh, it's important that, that we do both. We also do both uh, plasma and tissue. And also, uh, specific for what we're talking, that is entry. For example, if you do plasma, I, I'm not aware that there is any platform in plasma that can do entra 3. So that's why if you only do plasma, you, 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 you can, the possibility to miss entra 3 or entra 2 that are very rare. Yeah. But that's why I think uh, it's important to, to complement and do both of them. And the second yeah. thing that I, I don't know if happens in your community, but in GI community, but in lung cancer, we were experts in testing until we developed these chemoimmuno combos. And now we have a problem because uh, as soon as you get the PDL one two days later, a lot of people gets excited and wants to to shoot, you know, and start the chemoimmuno, and the patient is impatient, right. and they don't think that there maybe it's education. Now we need to wait two weeks for the plasma or three weeks for the tissue because these uh, target therapies, as Mark said, are very important. We can always do the chemoimmuno one year later or two years later or five years later if it's an outpatient. You know? right. Well, that, that's sort of stressing that discipline I was praising you for is now you've got some pretty good carrots there to get on with uh, systemic chemoimmuno uh, going forward.